This is why you should accept me into your x-ray program. What do you think? Pretty much what to expect from this program is stress. 7 a.m. clinical and you gotta drive an hour and a half. That's gonna be hard. That's gonna be hard. But anatomy and physiology shouldn't even be legal in this country. Like, honestly, it shouldn't even be legal around the whole entire world. So, let's start for this first one because I know there are a lot of people going into the expert program i think a lot of you guys started this month which congratulations i really 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 hope you stick with it and you absolutely lo love x-ray the way that i do so just a little background for everybody that's new to my channel my name is kaya and i am an x-ray student i grad i am not an x-ray school student anymore i was an x-ray student a little while ago so I graduated in May of 2023 out of my program in 2021 and I've just been collecting tips and tricks and just like ideas on what I can share with you guys to make your journey easier so I personally think that where you should start is to find a school that's the first and most important thing that you can do is to find a school so let's go through the three list of schools that you could possibly go to you go to community school you can go to a university that provides the program or you could go to a private school and i did it in that order from the cheapest to the most expensive so community schools are always going to be a little cheaper but don't don't feel no type of way about going to a community school because i promise you if it is accredited it has the same program or it has the same information as it would at a private school or at a uh, university so a community school what i would say a pro to community school is it will be the cheapest option along with any type of assistance that you may be able to get i always 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 recommend going to a community school first or I would say looking into a community school first. And then second option is a university that provides a two year program. So that was me, that was my program. I went to a university that typically only has four year programs, but for the X-ray program, it was only two years. The con is it's just more a little bit more expensive than a community school would have been. Um, and then the third option is private school. So much more expensive and I do not think that they offer financial aid or any type of assistance for finances so that is another thing to consider um, when you are looking for schools and I will also link in my description box the accreditation website that I use to verify if my school is accredited through the JRECT I think that's what it's called this is how to apply to your program so you always nine times out of ten there will be an entrance exam what type of entrance exam that is i'm not sure so a lot of people i've been hearing to all my people in texas hey y'all hey my x ray students in texas but i've been hearing a lot of students that are going to the school going to school in texas or um they have to do a hesi exam which is like a requirement I don't know if this is still going on, but I know before COVID, they was having interviews. So you have to sit in front of the professors and be like, hey, this is why you should accept me into your x-ray program. What do you think? Yeah, no. Um, an entrance exam or interview. Mine was a critical thinking exam, like I said. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this video and i think this is one of the questions that i get the most especially on tiktok is what prereqs did you take how long were your prereqs how long is the program and all that good juicy stuff the question that you always need to ask yourself is when you are taking these prereqs if you're taking them at a different school will they transfer to the school that you are looking into going to that is a big thing because if they do not transfer then they're going to make you retake those prereqs at the community or university or private school that you are at which is going to take more time okay so it's going to add more time to your you know your journey um and that's something that kind of can be avoided if you know what school you're going to and if you are doing prereqs at a different school which i did so i had to make sure that everything lined up to a t um the classes that i took for prereqs was a and p one and two which anatomy and physiology shouldn't even be legal in this country like honestly it shouldn't even be legal around the whole entire world i feel like a and p one and two especially one 
is harder than the actual program. So I understand y'all struggle when you talk about A and P one and two. I totally get it. But I took A and P one and two English college math psychology medical terminology and i took a biology class i also took another class but i just can't remember so with me how i set up my how i set up my prereqs was i did one semester so um in the summer i did biology so that i could take a and p and then in the fall i did a and p one medical terminology psychology and english and the reason why I was able to take four classes in one semester is because I split them into eight weeks. So some of them, the three of them was the last eight weeks and then one of them was the first eight weeks. And then I think my A&P was the entire eight week, uh, the entire 16 weeks, if I'm not mistaken. And then my next semester, I just took two. So I took college math and A&P two. And so I was able to get my prereqs done in a year. A lot of people ask me like what to expect from the program. So <sighs> what to expect from the program I have a TikTok on my video or just like about this and it is pinned I think it's the first one pinned so make sure you guys go check that out check that out I'll put the link to my TikTok in the description box but what to expect from the program I feel like lots of homework lots of excitement assignments lots of clinicals um lots of tests um lots of quizzes and stress pretty much what to expect from this program is stress it's not an easy program by any means at all but i never have said that i regret it and i've almost been out for like a year and a half and i still do not regret it at all it was one of the best decisions that i've ever made um just be prepared to study a lot um having set schedules for studying for doing homework um saying no to certain things like I can't go out this day I gotta study or like you know just being locked down locked in focused it's not a type of program that you can like you know go willy-nilly crazy Ooh, I can go out all the time I can do this I can do that I can do this and then come back and study for two minutes it's not that type of program at all it was definitely worth it um and then Things to look out for while you're looking for a program. So like I said, I think a lot of things that people have to be careful with is just making sure that your money is not getting wasted in this process because it can happen, um, especially during the prereqs and your time. Your time and your money are very, very important just in general, just in life. And so I think the biggest key is just to make sure you watch what you're putting your money into, what class, if it's worth it. I think the biggest, biggest, biggest piece of advice I would get when starting an x-ray program or looking for one is to find the school first. Find the school first. Find the program. Figure out if you want to do accredited or non-accredited. It's information on the internet about the difference. And like I said, I'll include that in the video. Then figure out your prereqs. Once you figure out your prereqs, you do all of those, try to do them at the school. If you cannot do them at the school, make sure that they transfer over to the program that you were in. Also, people that's coming from different programs, nursing or whatever you may have you, make sure or look into your classes that you already have and see if they switch over. I feel like even though, you know, this is to better the world by us getting this education, we're literally helping save people's lives college is still really tricky it's still a money thing and it's still a business so they are going to try to figure out how and which way they can get your money so just be careful with that and i feel like you would you know you'll be okay now on this list i do have accreditation so i'm going to talk about that now actually so you have non-accredited and you have accredited. And I'm going to go through this really fast because it's something that I looked into before getting into my program. So I was hearing all these horror stories about people with non-accredited licenses like can only go to a specific part of the area in our state or they can only travel so far out of the state with that license. So here's the thing. When you are accredited, I will say that your license speaks a little bit more. 
it speaks a little louder because the hospitals the clinics they know that your school was held to a specific standard now accredited and non-accredited schools I wouldn't say one is better and one is worse, but I will say accredited schools have a certain standard that the nation knows about or United States knows about that, hey, this student was held to specific standards and I'm going to hire them because I know they had these set standards set in stone at their school. With non-accredited schools, it is a little bit more difficult to take your license to different states. Some states may not accept your license at all. So it just kind of limits you if you are looking to leave the state that you're in or looking to, you know, just travel or maybe do a travel assignment. It might be a little bit more difficult with a non-accredited school. I also want to see their rate for passing their boards. So I think all of that was included um, on the website for my school. So they, they told us the rate at which people were passing their um registry and they told us at what rate people were graduating lastly what i want to talk about is when you are considering a school let's say you find a school it's accredited it's a non-accredited you look through that um you look through what prereqs they needed all that good stuff blah 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 at this next step when you are looking into applying you need to consider how far that school is away from you okay because if that school is 30 minutes away from you nine times out of ten you could probably get a clinical that's probably an hour away from the school so think about driving an hour and a half before 7 a.m clinicals and i'm gonna tell y'all it's not easy to get up for clinicals it's really not you have a 7 a.m clinical and you got to drive an hour and a half That's going to be hard. That's going to be hard. But if you think it's worth it, it's worth it. But I will say, once you get everything figured out and you're like, okay, this is the school that I possibly could see myself go through, go to, email the director of the program or the academic advisor of the program. Reach out to them and ask them, what's their furthest clinical? Because that's a big deal. I think the furthest my clinical option went out was an hour and i never got sent that far i've gotten like 45 minutes which wasn't horrible it wasn't the best i did 45 minutes i did 15 minutes and then i did three minutes so thankfully they got closer and closer as the program went on but yeah y'all so just to just recap let's do a whole little summary of our beginner tips for the new people coming into the x-ray program find you a school Figure out how to apply, figure out what prereqs they need, figure out um, just some more information about the accreditation through the school. I gave you guys some tips on what to expect from the program and figure out where those clinicals are because that's a big deal, okay? That's a big deal. But yeah, guys, I am so, so happy that I'm able to get this video out for you guys. And like I said, there are three more videos that I have coming out. If you guys have any questions, because I'm going to do the Q&A last. So if you guys have any questions, comment down below. Um, and I will try to include all of those questions into a video. I think the Q&A is probably going to be the longest because I get so many questions. And if you guys want quicker responses from me, Follow my TikTok because I'm literally on there 25-8 all the time. I'm on TikTok all the time. Just looking up like x-ray programs and students in x-ray and radiology and ultrasound and MRI. All these crazy things. Um, I stay on radiology TikTok. So, and yeah guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And without further ado, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Peace.